And next, I want to introduce, um, it's really an honor to introduce uh, Barry Dollinger, Rabbi Barry Dollinger from Congregation Beth Shalom, who has been a dear friend of mine for years. Orthodox Jewish rabbi, and that might be surprising to some. I come from the strictest denomination in the Jewish spectrum, um, but it might surprise people to know that there's a variety of opinions about how abortion would be considered in Orthodox Judaism. So, uh, thank you for sort of running through this brief, very brief summary of a, a statement of Jewish law, um, and then hopefully you'll see why that's important. Everyone agrees that in Jewish law, if there's a threat to the physical health of the mother at any point in a pregnancy, that an abortion is not just allowed, but required. Orthodox Judaism makes a value judgment about life and potential life in the most difficult of situations and says that at times we might actually require an abortion. So that's, that's the starting point. And no Orthodox rabbis disagree with that statement of law. Where there is a debate, though, is before that. On the one hand, some endorse a position that sounds mildly like the mainstream Catholic position. Rabbi Moses Feinstein ruled that abortion is, in fact, considered murder unless it occurs in the circumstance that I described before. He was a major rabbi in New York and a great legal decisor. But there was another rabbi, Eliezer Waldenberg, in Israel, a prominent medical legal decisor. And he ruled that up until viability, uh, depending on social, emotional, financial, and medical conditions, uh, it's up to a woman and her family, her mentors, her clergy and her relationship with God to determine what to do in the most difficult of circumstances. <coughs> the job of clergy is to serve a pastoral role in that regard. That abortion is absolutely not murder, that it's not something to be taken lightly, but it can be done uh, if the circumstances uh, would be so that that's what a person would decide. Essentially, a, a per choice position. And this debate is live even within the very small stream of Orthodox Judaism. The reason I bring that up is to suggest how we might deal with differences of opinion on a topic of moral import that is hotly debated in modern society. The tendency is for groups, particularly majoritarian groups, to use the government to enforce their position on other people who might disagree. But living in a society which is diverse and growing more diverse by the day, the wise choice, indeed the imperative, the moral imperative, at this moment in time is for the government to protect the per parameters of pluralism by legislating broadly, endorsing one position, particularly a majoritarian position, limits the free exercise of conscience and of religion of others who might disagree. And so I would urge legislators, even those legislators who, let's say, consider themselves staunch Catholics with a particular view on this, to be willing to understand that they can hold to that view strongly, advocate for it privately in churches, in their homes, in their families, but understand that this is an issue that reasonable minds can debate that different religious streams, or even within one religious stream, there can be a variety of opinions on this matter, and that laws ought to protect the free exercise of a broad set of opinions. That's not a weakness of faith, but a respect for pluralism. Ultimately, all of our religious faiths do better when we're free from the temptation to rule over others by using the government as a weapon of coercion. It's a temptation we all fall prey to. After all, we all feel passionately about our views and want others to endorse them. That's the beauty of the First Amendment. It urges a value judgment. The free exercise of differing opinions is the way to coexist peaceably in a pluralistic society. I hope legislators are able to understand this point. 
not to take that as a weakness of their position and to codify into law broad protections that would help those going through the most difficult of circumstances be free of conscience to be able to do what they need to do in consultation with the people they choose to consult with. Thank you so much. Thank you.